It's been a while since I've done a video on finances, and so today I thought I would talk about something I've been thinking about for quite some time now, especially as this election cycle begins to heat up, and it's just this. If I were about to make a big purchase or a big financial decision or even a big life-changing decision, I think I would put it off if I could until after the election and after some of the dust had settled from them. And let me tell you why. It's not from a perspective of financial advice. This is much more of a life strategy that I want to look at this from. Certainly from a financial perspective, you know your financial system uh, and situation much better than anybody else. And, and so I certainly couldn't advise uh, you on that, nor would I presume to do that. Uh, but just from from looking at, at the outside, uh, from the outside looking in, it does seem like things are very unsettled. And unsettled times are a very bad time, history has proven, to be making big decisions. Um, I really enjoy Dave Ramsey's uh, uh, program. Uh, he's got a financial piece uh, program that I, I believe is very helpful if you're trying to uh, set a good budget, especially if you're trying to get out of debt while setting that budget. Uh, and I recommend that. But he had a piece of advice that I, uh, I heard years ago uh, for, for people who were in a situation that was just life-changing. He was specifically talking to somebody who had lost a spouse, whether it was uh, the man or the woman. And his comment was he would not make any major decisions until at least a year had passed. And the reason for that was uh, pretty sound, I believe. You're, you're more emotional at a time, especially if you've lost a spouse that you've been with uh, for the bigger part of your life. And so it's a very emotional time. Uh, not, a, not a perfect setting to be making big financial decisions or life uh, decisions as far as moving uh, to a new place or getting a new job. It's not that you won't find that there are opportunities that are just too good to pass up in the first year, and I'm not suggesting you should even d uh, consider passing them up, but as a general rule, if you don't have to make a big change during a time of turmoil, whether it's physical turmoil from within the world around you or just in your own private world, or whether it's emotional uh, uh, turmoil and the uncertainty that comes with that, sometimes it's just best to let the dust settle and see what's going to happen. And this particular election cycle, I believe, is such a time. I've I've uh, uh, paid attention, I suppose, to election cycles since about 1984. Uh, I could vote uh, as early. My first presidential election I could vote in was in 1980, but I don't believe I actually started voting until 1988. I really didn't see much point in it. I see a lot more point in it now, even though I would admit that I'm not sure that our votes count as much as we would hope that they would. But, but again, there, there's just a lot of bitterness, a lot of bad feelings on both sides. In addition to that, we have one of the candidates who is really an outsider. He's a very wealthy man, but he's not part of the system. Uh, some people will call that the, the deep state. Some people will just refer to it as the system that's in place, but there is a fact that there are people who get very deeply entrenched within government, within banks, within large corporations who really don't want to see the boat rocked. They don't, they don't want to see changes. It could affect their power. It could affect their bottom line. And so there appears to be a number of different uh, things that they might be inclined to do to try and prevent such a thing. One of those things that's, that's uh, certainly popping up right now, whether it's because of people concerned about the election not going their way or other reasons, is, is war. 
there, it's a very unsettled time in the Middle East, and America seems to just be chomping at the bit to get involved with that, don't they? A very unsettled time within the Ukraine, and America is very much involved with that, and it seems like they want to get even more involved. A time of war is not a very good time to be making big decisions, whether we're talking about switching uh, our, our, our job uh, uh, environment, whether it's just going from one sector uh, to another, or whether it's changing jobs in the same sector, uh, whatever it is, uh, during times of war, there's a lot of things that can happen. Economic things can, can cause big corporations that seemed very stable uh, to uh, change the way that they operate. And very often those who have been the most recently hired are the first to go if there's any kind of a downturn. And so just from that perspective alone, this type of an unsettled environment may not be the best one to be thinking about changing jobs if you don't have to. And again, there are exceptions to every rule. You might have a dream job come up or an opportunity in a lifetime to, to move to a new location uh, that's not even uh, perhaps anywhere near where you live now. Uh, and if such a situation comes up, then just pray about it and, and go in the direction that you have the most peace in. But again, we are in a very unsettled time within our history in America. And so if you've been thinking about getting a new car because your old car is just starting to need a lot more repairs, you don't have to do it, but you're thinking maybe you'd like to get a new car, I think I'd hold off for a while. Uh, if, if, if you uh, are thinking about buying a new house and you don't have to do that, there's not a real compelling reason for you to do so, I'd, I'd wait again until the dust settles. And then once the election is over and once we're sure that everything uh, is on a, a more even keel than they've been uh, in recent months, that might be the time to start thinking about these things. And I agree, you could miss some very good opportunities by doing so. And if you find an opportunity that's just too good to be true, I'm not saying don't consider uh, taking advantage of that opportunity. But what I am saying is all other things being equal, if you have a big uh, purchase to make or a big decision to make that you don't have to right now, I would wait until after the election and, and you see how things are going to uh, shake out from that. And then there's one other side to this that I think is very important, and this is in the area of preparations. I realize that, that preppers for years have kind of been mocked and and, and scorned and ridiculed, but, but uh, prepping is a very biblical um, uh, way of life. I'm not talking about tearing down barns and building newer ones so you just have stacks upon stacks of stuff, but I am saying that it doesn't hurt to have a little extra food on hand, especially during unsettled times. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you don't know if the national economy is going to suffer a blow that changes everything. You don't know if your personal economy is going to suffer a blow that changes everything. People do lose jobs. People do get injured. People do just uh, um, have situations that they could not have predicted. And so it's always a good time to have maybe a month or two's worth of food on hand. And you don't have to spend a lot of money for that. You can just get beans and rice and you can, you can get uh, for a very modest amount of, of, of money uh, a several months supply of, of those items and then you can build your pantry around that as well. So again, I'm not talking about uh, going crazy and, and um, just uh, stocking up so you're supplied for the next 20 years. I'm just saying it might not hurt. It might be prudent whether at this time or any other to have a couple of months of food uh, on, on hand. Uh, and then there are other areas, um, your investments, uh, that, that you're going to want to look fairly closely at as far as making big decisions on that. And again, all these things are, are within uh, your responsibility, and so you should be the one that gets to make the determination on that. And I don't believe you should be unduly influenced by somebody else's opinion. But 
just as Larry, or excuse me, just as Dave uh, Ramsey suggests that, that maybe you wait a year uh, if you've had a big tragedy in your life, such as the death of a spouse, before you make any big decisions. This is a particular time in history where it might not hurt you just to wait a couple of months before you make big decisions if you don't have to make them now or if there is not a compelling reason, some sort of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that would require you to go ahead and make that decision now. Anyway, a uh, short video today, but it has been something that's been on my mind, and I do think it's something that we all need to be thinking about. And as Christians, we really need to be praying about it because the bottom line is this. We're here to serve God during good times and bad, and part of that service is to make the most prudent decisions that we can that will keep us in a position to where we can serve God well. And if we're in a bad financial uh, pinch, it's going to be harder to focus on that service to Him because we're just really struggling to keep our heads above water. Anyway, once again, that's it for today. Shorter video, but I do thank you for, for tuning in. I hope this gives you something to think about. Uh, as we approach the election. By the way, today is, I think, September the 25th of 2024, so you really just have about a month and a half before you find out if there's going to be a lot of uncertainty after the election or not. I think anybody can wait 45 days uh, for most things, and, and it might be prudent to do so right now. Thank you for listening. I hope we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.